I'd like to just start with some quick housekeeping. Uh, we will be saving our question and answers for the end of the session, and we will be answering all of our questions from the chat box function. And I think we're just about ready. Good afternoon, everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our virtual college fair. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Arturo Arana from New Jersey City University. So. Thank you, Ms. Dale. All right, you're all set. Perfect. Let's see here. Oops. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Arturo. I'm an admissions counselor at uh, New Jersey City University. Um, uh, uh, I cover Hudson County, so I cover all the high schools throughout uh, the county. And my main role is to connect uh, students uh, and, and parents and family members with, with the school. I'm joined uh, here today by uh, my colleague, Ms. Goldston. She's the EOF Recruit Recruitment Coordinator. The EOF program is one of our academic support services programs uh, on, um, at the university. We'll be hearing from her in a little bit. And we're, we're uh, joined by uh, one of our student ambassadors, uh, Kelly, Kelly Francisco. She's one of our amazing uh, current students. So you'll be hearing directly from, uh, from one of our students today. The student ambassador program is one of our um, it's our, our student, uh, um, uh, they, they work in the admissions office, collaborating with us, uh, doing presentations, doing, uh, doing uh, tours, um, administrative work. So they're, they're an excellent uh, source of support for our, for our work. Uh, so we're very glad we have her with us today. Um, again, I wanna, I wanna start off by saying thank you. Thank you for, for joining us. We're gonna be covering uh, uh, information about NJCU, including the academic programs that we offer, uh, the um, uh, resources that we offer as well. Uh, before I get started, though, I want to say that uh, as an admissions counselor, um, I want to say that that by you by you being here today, by you participating in these type of events that that the Jersey uh, like like the Jersey City Public Library is doing, it says. You know, to me, it says it says a lot about you in terms of your your uh, college search process, right? May you be a senior, may you be a parent, may you be a family member, or, uh, or a junior, or in any other grade. You know, by participating in events like this, like information sessions, right? You are you guys are you guys are being proactive in your college search process. You guys are gathering information, you know, about different schools. Um, about their academic programs, about their resources, about uh, the cost, about the scholarships that may be available. So all of that information uh, is going to be very handy for you guys because you guys have you you guys would have been you uh, it would be very handy for you guys once the time comes for you to make the decision on where you guys are going to be attending college. May it be next fall for your seniors or, or whenever that is for for uh, students in other grades, for example. Um, all of that research that you would have done is going to be backing you up so you can compare and contrast the different schools that you're looking into and make the best decision for yourself. Um, today, you guys are going to actually be making uh, connections with uh, not just NJCU, but other, uh, I believe, uh, other inst uh, Stevens Institute and NJAT as well. So you guys are going to have resources, direct resources. Now, you're going to have my contact information. You're going to have Ms. Goldstein's contact information. And now, after this, after this um, event, you can contact us directly if you guys have any questions, and we'll and we'll uh, and we can even connect you with uh, academic departments that you're interested in uh, as well. So again, it's a pleasure for, uh, being here with you guys today. So NJCU, NJCU, as I'm assuming many of you know, we're located in Jersey City. Uh, uh, we're a mid-sized university. We have about six thousand seven hundred students. Um, and we're a public university here in New Jersey. And we have two locations in, in, in Jersey City. We have the main location, which is on Kennedy Boulevard. 
It's about a, uh, about eight minutes from uh, Journal Square. Um, so this is the main campus right here on Kennedy Boulevard. And then we also have, let's see here. We have a separate campus. We have a separate campus on, um, ooh, mm -hmm. Right by the river. This is the School of Business. So this is the main campus and this is the School of Business. For those of you that are interested in business, we have a number of concentrations, which I'll go over in a little bit. We have accounting, we have uh, management, we have global business and so on. This right here, just so you get um, an idea, this is the Hudson River and it's right across from the World Trade Center in, in downtown Manhattan. Right across from it. You guys see this middle building right here? The School of Business is located in the first two floors of this middle building right here. I'm actually also a student of NJCU. I'm doing my master's in, uh, I'm getting my MBA, uh, my master's in business administration at NJCU. I'm on my second year now, so I'll be done in the summer. For, for me, you know, this, this has been my, my second home, uh, as they say here. Uh, so it's been a great, great experience. It's actually, a, it's, it's pretty cool because it's also a newer building. It's, it's about five years old and uh, has new, uh, new labs, New facility, it's a new facility, and it's located in the business district of Jersey City. So there, on the first floor, there's an internship office there. Once you become a sophomore and you're a business student, right? It's gonna that office is gonna be able to connect you with one of the many companies in the business district of Jersey City, so you guys can get practical experience um, and also uh, meet people. You know, because you guys are gonna be working in an office working for a, you're gonna have a supervisor, you're gonna have uh, uh, coworkers there, you're gonna, gonna be able to build relationships and that's gonna be key once you guys are getting ready uh, to graduate from college or right afterwards and looking for your first job uh, with your bachelor's degree. So those connections, those practical skills, you know, are gonna be very, very helpful for you. Companies that, that we connect students with include Chase Bank, Fidelity Investments, um, uh, E-Trade, for example, and, and many, many others. If you guys haven't taken a tour yet, take advantage of you guys are home and take a virtual tour. We actually have two options. Uh, uh, and this is going to take you, uh, the virtual tour is going to show you our facilities at the main campus and the school business. Uh, we have the student guided virtual tour. I, to be sincere with you, I would highly, highly, highly recommend for you to uh, uh, attend one of these because it, yes, you're going to be able to see both campuses but you're gonna be able to connect with, uh, with, with our students and because they're the ones conducting the tour. And um, you guys are gonna be able to ask them questions. You can ask them uh, questions about their own experience uh, on campus, their, own, their, their, um, their current experience, also their experience in their transition from high school to college, you know, where you're gonna be going through. So there would be an excellent, excellent resource. Let me actually show you something real quick. When you guys click on that link below, um, you guys are going to go to this page right here. Guided campus tours, right? It's going to be by students. And you guys see the calendar here. We have uh, options three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you click on Monday, for example, you have an option of 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 5 o'clock. You guys click on it, and you guys are going to be able to fill out. Here, let me just show you. Fill out a little uh, registration form here. Boom. And then, uh, and then you'll be all... All good to go for your for your virtual tour. So that's one option. I highly recommend those so you can connect with our students and see our campus. Oops. And another option is a self-guided tour. I would recommend to do it to do them both. Um, these links, guys, I'm actually going to be uh, putting a bunch of links up throughout the presentation. Right at the end of the presentation, I'm going to put a a, a, a little a, a link in the chat box, which is going to take you to our virtual information card. You guys are just gonna fill it out. It'll take you more than a minute, and I'll do this at the end at the end of the presentation. You guys, will, you guys will go click on the link, and then uh, just fill it out for for us. And then we're gonna send you. I'm gonna send you a follow up email with all of the links, so you don't have to copy and paste these if you don't want. Uh, as long as you fill out that virtual information card, which I'll post the link on the chat box uh, towards the end of the presentation, you'll be able to fill it out, and I'll send you a list. I'll send you a follow up list of all of the links that we cover. And we're also, uh, it will also be great so we can keep in touch with you and let you know of the different events that, are, that, we're, that we're hosting uh, virtually this, uh, this semester. So 
Oh, we have a number of uh, academic programs at NJCU. We have actually 47 different bachelor's degrees. Bachelor's degree is your four, four year uh, degree that you get after high school, right? Uh, and then we have 20, 22 master's degrees and three doctoral programs. For you guys, the next step after high school is gonna be getting your bachelor's degree. And we have, we have a number of academic programs. We have business, we have uh, uh, exercise science, uh, we have um, uh, political science. Let me actually show you this. Here, right here, these are, these are the most popular majors that we offer. We have biology. If you guys are interested in going to medical school, right, becoming, becoming a doctor in a, in a, in a specific uh, specialty, the first step for you guys to do is get your biology to that NJCU because to the biology track, you guys are gonna be satisfying your pre-meds that way. Uh, you, you guys are going to be able to apply to medical school business. If you guys are inter interested in business, you saw that we have our own campus dedicated to our school business. We have a number of concentrations in accounting. Accounting is the only, actually the only major at NJCU where we have, um, where, we, where you can get both your bachelor's and your master's in accounting in five years. So we have that program of economics, global business, which is international business, finance, management, marketing, uh, if you're interested in that, hospitality, working in the hotel industry, sports management, uh, and this one, supply, supply chain logistics and maritime port management. So a number of concentrations in the school business. Criminal justice, national security studies. If you guys are interested in, uh, in, um, in working for a federal agency like the CIA, the FBI, the DEA, this degree would be a good foundation for you psychology, nursing. If you guys are interested in nursing, we don't have a four-year nursing program. We don't, but we have a, we have a RN to BSN program. What that is, it's you get your RN, your registered nursing certificate at Hudson County Community College, since you guys live in Hudson. And then you guys would, we have a partnership with them. Once you complete that program, you transfer to our nursing program, which is two additional years to the one at Hudson and then you will get your bachelor's of science in nursing. Um, if that's what you're interested in, definitely, definitely contact me after, um, after today and I can go more into depth into that program for you. Education, if you guys wanna be, uh, uh, aspire to be teachers, uh, uh, in early childhood education and elementary uh, uh, education or secondary education, uh, we have a solid education program, art. We have a number of visual art concentrations, drawing, painting, ceramics, we also have illustration, graphic design, uh, music, dance, and theater. If you're interested in the performing arts, for example, uh, we have a partnership actually with NJIT, who's here today. Um, we have a three plus two program with them. If you're interested in uh, engineering, we have, we don't offer engineering at NJCU, but we have a partnership with NJIT where what you would do is you would study uh, three years, hence the number three here, at NJCU and get your degree in physics. You would study physics. And then uh, you, would go to, you, would, you would go to NJIT and uh, get your bachelor's, um, uh, you would go to NJIT for two years and get your bachelor's in, uh, in three, either in one of the following three concentrations. It would either be in mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, or civil engineering. So that's the partnership we have with, with NJIT. If you have any questions about that, definitely uh, uh, contact me and, we can we can keep chatting about it. Uh, so besides the academic programs that we, on top of the academic programs that we have, we've been recognized for several achievements. Some of them uh, include this one right here, number one by U.S. News and World Report, uh, being the best public school in New Jersey for ethnic diversity. So this right here, you know, it's all going to depend on what you're looking for out of your college experience as well. So NJCU is located in Jersey City. Jersey City is the most diverse city in the country in the United States. Uh, just to give you an idea, at NJCU, there's 52 different languages spoken on campus. What that means is there's people from all over the world, right? For example, like me, you know, I love to learn, you know, uh, about different languages, different cultures, different food, you know, different experiences. I value that. I value diversity. If that's something you value, then NJCU definitely has, has that to offer you. Other, other achievements? Best RN to BSN program, best college in New Jersey. We were named number two. Uh, this last one, best bang for the buck. 
Uh, we're affordable. We're actually the most affordable public university um, in, uh, in the state. There's a difference between cheap and affordable. Cheap means uh, little or no value um, or quality. Uh, we, are, we, we offer, as you saw, a number of academic, solid academic programs, and we are accessible. Uh, and hence, we are affordable. And we'll go into the cost in a little bit as well. Uh, to show you uh, on top of uh, the academic programs that we offer, for those of you that are interested in science, right, in, in the STEM professions, if you guys are into biology, chemistry, physics, et cetera, this, is, this would be your second home. And this right here, just like the School of Business, which is only five years old, the science building is only five years old as well, NJCU has a commitment to, uh, to uh, providing its students with, with, uh, with the latest, most up-to-date resources, right? And facilities as well. Like this one is a multi-million dollar building with, with new labs, new equipment. So if you're in the sciences, this will be where you would be spending most of your, your time at here at NJCU. On top of that, on top of the school business, on top of the new uh, science building, we're also expanding this right here. For those of you that are interested in the uh, in the performing arts, music, dance, and theater, this is going to be the, the new performing arts center right here. And the music, dance, and theater program is going to be located there. And this is in the work in, in the works. Uh, it's not under construction yet, but uh, hopefully um, uh, uh, it would be uh, would start soon. And and the plans are within two to three years for it to be uh, to be up. So for those of you say that are are, are um, that are going to be starting uh, as freshmen next year, then you guys would get to benefit from this at least halfway down down your college experience. So we covered academics. We covered the, the different uh, facilities that we um, that we offer as well. Um, on top of academics, is very important. Which 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 uh, during your college experience, anywhere you go. Also, you got to complement it. You know, and this is advice for me as a former student. Former, former undergraduate student, which you're going to be, um, and also as an admissions counselor. You know, the focus when you go to college is for you to, you know, the end goal is for you to progress, right? To, 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 uh, to get ahead as well. So when you go to college, you got to do well academically, definitely, but you also got to complement it with other experiences as well. If you go out, you know, once, you, once you're getting close to graduation and looking for a job, um, um, or right after graduation, right? The employers are gonna be looking for, for someone that has completed a program, right? An academic program uh, successfully, yes, academics, but also they're looking for practical skills. Um, so on campus, we offer, like I said about the school business, internship opportunities. We, so we have the co-op office at the Career Development Center, we, which we have a partnership with over 450 uh, employers. And uh, they'll connect you once you're a sophomore, whatever your major is, they'll connect you with an internship so you can get those practical skills, you can meet people, you can build your network, you know, uh, so you can have professional references once that time, you know, comes for you to uh, take the next step after getting your degree. Let me show you this real quick. We have here, this is, the, this is our website, NJCU. NJCU's website. This is the internships and, and co-op education office I was referring to. For all the way down, you can see that these are some of our participating employers. And we have Barclays Center, where you can do your internships at. Barclays Center, um, Fidelity Investments, Fox News, Jersey City TV, it's a number of them. Michael Kors, if you're interested in fashion and in, in, in marketing and in, uh, uh, business. Uh, Plaza Hotel, Wyndham Worldwide, if you're interested in hospitality, the, the, the hotel industry, Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, New Jersey Homeland, Office of Homeland Security, if you're interested in uh, criminal justice, national security studies. My point is, the point is that we have a number, these are just some examples, a number of uh, internship opportunities, uh, a number of partnerships with actual employers where you would benefit from. Besides internships, we have other communities on campus to join clubs, organizations, Greek life, we have fraternities, sororities, we have uh, that focus a lot on, on social service activities around the community, 
the fitness center, the pool right here, the sauna, Gothic Times, is the, it's the campus newspaper. If you're interested in writing and you don't have to be, you know, uh, wanting to become a journalist to, 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 uh, to, to be a contributor for the, for the Gothic Times, uh, you would just have to have a passion for writing and you would definitely get a, be able to, uh, to uh, be a contributor for the campus newspaper. That would be a great experience for you guys. Study abroad, a national student exchange. We have a number of partnerships with schools um, abroad and, and domestically where you can study. You can spend a semester, you can spend an academic year. We have uh, school, uh, schools that we partner with in England, Spain, France, Japan, et cetera. Um, here through this program, National Student Exchange, you can uh, go to a school for a semester again or an academic year in Florida, Texas, California, the state of Washington. Right? And the cool thing about this is that it's not like you're gonna go to a, a school in a different country or in a different state and you're gonna pay what they charge. No, you would be charged uh, the, the same NJCU tuition and fees uh, amount um, as, as, as you would be uh, as a regular student here. And if you are already receiving some kind of scholarship or financial aid, that would apply. Um, and also here, if you guys are, oops. And if you guys are athletes, if you're interested in athletics, we have a number of programs, a number of um, sports, and we're division three. What that means is it's a very competitive division. What that means in terms of scholarships, we do division three schools don't offer athletic scholarships. Uh, only division one and some division two, only a few division two schools, but we offer merit-based scholarships. We offer academic scholarships, and I'll cover that in a little bit. And these are some of the sports that we offer for men and for women. And here, um, I'll be sending you guys the link where you, if you guys are interested in, you click on that link, you're gonna fill out a form and you're gonna be able to be connected with um, one of our coaches of the particular sport you're interested in. And they're gonna reach out to you so you guys can uh, chat with them and hear about the, the, the specific program and ask them any questions that you have. So we've, so here you've seen the different the different uh, opportunities that we have at the campus, different resources, internships, studying abroad, university and uh, clubs and organizations. With us, we have today, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, we have uh, one of our student ambassadors, Kelly, Kelly Francisco. She's one of our amazing students and she's gonna elaborate a little bit more on her experience uh, um, here at NJCU. Thank you, Arturo. So good morning, everyone. Um, as uh, Arturo mentioned, my name is Kelly um, and I'm a current NJCU student. Um, in May, I will be graduating with a Bachelor in Science in Criminal Justice. Um, so essentially, it's, it's been a great four years. It flew right by. Um, I'm still shocked that I'm already a senior. Um, but essentially, NJCU has been a home uh, to me. It's a home away from home. Um, I've been a part of um, NSLS, um, I've worked with Res Life, I've been the Campus Life Voice, I've um, essentially been all over the campus. Um, I was involved um, in a lot of activities um, whenever there was always an event um, in one of our, in G-Sub, so that's one of our buildings on campus. Um, I was always either finding out what was going on, um, we're just thinking of ideas to to run to my to let my friends know like hey we should do this on campus and we should do that. Um, so majority of the events that we have on campus are made by students for students. Um, so that's one of the the, the pros um, that NJCU has. I uh, I cannot complain. Um, I currently, as Arturo mentioned, I work with um, the Office of, uh, of Undergrad Admissions um, as a student. So essentially that has opened a lot of doors for me. Um, I'm, I had the opportunity to speak to you guys today, um, which is essentially, it's great. Um, you, you, you never know who, who you're gonna run into or who you can help. Um, and that's essentially what I love doing. So it's, this is essentially um, one of the best jobs that I've had um, throughout my undergrad years. And I, have, I can't complain. Um, and JCU has honestly backed me up in everything. Um, literally the times currently are rough and NJCU has been um, behind us every step of the way. They've accommodated students. They, they, they're literally, it's, it's a family. Um, once I started working in the office, I literally made another family away from home. 
um, always asking to see if I'm okay. Um, they're, they're literally um, the best, essentially. Um, I've had a great four years. Um, unfortunately, um, well, fortunately, but unfortunately, I will be leaving um, since I'm graduating this year, but uh, I cannot complain. Um, then when it comes to like the sports and whatnot, I was never uh, somebody who played sports, um, but I have attended, I think maybe like one or two games um, and, and it's, it's different. It's, it's a great environment. Um, it's exciting. Um, college is nothing like high school. I can, I can assure you that. Um, I learned that my freshman year. Um, I was a bit closed off in the beginning because I didn't know what to expect or, or what was going on. Um, but I started getting involved, uh, slowly started working uh, my way around opportunities. I ended up being a student ambassador, um, which honestly is exciting. It's fun. You get to meet new people. Um, I've helped several students throughout the years who have just been sitting there um, completely lost. They didn't know what they were running into. Um, and I had that wonderful opportunity to uh, help them, to explain to them what the process is like, um, to explain to them what 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 the difference is going to be. It's, it's, it's honestly, it, it's two different worlds. Um, for some, it could be ex extremely hard to, to settle um, for something new. Um, but other than that, I cannot complain about NJCU. The experience is fantastic. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here today. I'm actually saying that genuinely, I do believe that NJCU um, has opened, I'm telling you, so many opportunities. I three, maybe three, four years ago, I wouldn't be sitting here in front of um, students speaking to them. And NJCU has essentially, it was my foundation. It, it, it made me who I am today and I'm glad. Um, and if anybody has any questions towards the end, I will definitely be here um, to answer anything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. It was great to hear from directly from, from our, our current students as well. Me, I, you know, I, I am a student. I'm, a ma I'm in my master's program, but I was an undergrad several years ago. And uh, uh, my advice, uh, and not just with NJCU guys, with any other schools that you guys are looking into, you know, uh, for example, us, we offer the student guided tours by students, right? So you guys can ask them questions, but anywhere you're looking into, also have, you know, um, look for those opportunities where you guys can interact with current students so you can actually get their, their perspective. And, and all of that information is going to help you make the best decision for you at the end. Um, again, thank you, Kelly. And let's see here. So, oh, Residence Life 2 forms, um, uh, dormitories on uh, we have two on campus on the main campus the Bo Bodra Hall and Co-op Hall and then uh, we have this one which is also a newer facility I believe it's like six years old West Campus Village it's off campus it's about eight minute an eight minute walk from uh, the main campus the field plants which are included in the in the residence hall um, cost you have 24 hour security um, oops Guys, we've seen uh, the academic programs that we offer, the resources that we offer, like internships, uh, clubs, and so on, um, the dormitories. We heard from Kelly. So what does it take? What, what do you need? What, what do we require uh, for you to uh, get admitted into NJCU? Uh, you got to submit your Common App. Now, so if you guys are seniors um, or, or are helping out a senior, uh, they got to submit their Common App. For any questions about the Common App, the best resource is going to be their school counselor. So any questions about that, definitely uh, connect with the school counselor and they'll be able to guide them to submit that Common App. Um, GPA-wise, we ask for a minimum of a 2.75 cumulative GPA uh, for regular admissions into NJCU. So that's a B average. A minimum 2.75 uh, cumulative GPA for regular admissions. We're test optional, so we're SAT, ACT optional. What does that mean? That means that um, we do not require either of these tests, either the ASAT, SAT or ACT, to provide you with an admissions decision. So we can just provide you with an admissions decision just by looking at your transcript based on your GPA. However, if you're interested in scholarships, merit-based scholarships or the honors program, we do require uh, the test. So you do gotta submit that into us. Um, and for merit-based scholarships, it's a 3.0 minimum and a on the 
SATs, all right? The honors program, we have, uh, this is a top academically challenging program at NJCU. It's the honors program. You do not apply to the honors program. You apply to the university and then we determine if you are gonna, you would be a good candidate based on your application uh, for the programs and, and they would reach out to you. So you would, you would not apply directly to the honors program at first, apply directly to NJCU. And the cool thing of this program is that if you get admitted into that program, you would get the honors program scholarship, which covers 100% tuition for four years. That's a $50,000 value, which is pretty cool. Uh, among some of the other perks is we have financially supported international study abroad. So they typically take every year 14 day trips abroad and they've gone to Spain, they've gone to Peru and South America. This year in 2021, the plan is to go to uh, Germany. So it's, it's pretty cool and they're financially supported. So they assist you. Uh, in, in covering those costs. That I want you to know. So we have the honors program that, um, that offers, um, that offers uh, this opportunity for students that have achieved academic excellence. As you saw, we have a, a minimum 2.75 GPA for, uh, for regular admissions. If you guys have a GPA, a cumulative GPA between a 2.0 and a 2.75, right? Still apply to NJCU, still apply. Why? Because we have additional academic support services programs that are going to assist you. For example, the summer prior to your uh, first freshman year, you, you, would, uh, you would take part in one of these programs that are going to help you, you know, uh, uh, get up to college level. One of those programs is our EOF program. And actually, our EOF recruitment coordinator, Ms. Goldston, Lloyda Goldston, she's with us today, and she's going to go into that program for uh, Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on a Saturday afternoon. Um, as Arturo said, I'm the recruitment coordinator for the Opportunity Scholarship Program, also known as EOF, the Educational Opportunity Fund. Um, the EOF program is a state-funded program that is found on um, most university and community colleges. Um, so wherever you go, make sure you look into the EOF opportunity every um, college or university has their own criteria. I'll tell you what ours is at NJCU. Um, like Arturo said, the regular admission um, requirement is a 2.75. So any student that doesn't meet that um, requirement, they will come through us through a conditional acceptance. And through that conditional acceptance, um, you would need to attend our five week summer program. And most students would say, oh, it's my summer after graduation. I wanted to do something big and fabulous. And I wanted to just stay home and chill out. This program is designed to help you enrich in areas that um, you will need you know, a particular um, level of proficiency in order to be successful in your freshman year and beyond. So what we do is we provide um, reading and writing, math, um, last year, our program went virtual because, of course, um, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we were able to um, give our students, give our students their um, their learning. Um, we gave them laptops for the summer program. We uh, provided tutoring in every course. So there's a tutor in every class, along with you in the summer program, to assist you and help you move along. And it's an opportunity for those who may have to take a remedial course to get out of that remedial course and not have to pay for classes in the fall um, that don't count towards your graduation. Um, our goal is not to just get you in for the summer program, but to make sure you cross the graduation stage. Um, throughout the semesters that you are with our program, um, there is a $650 grant that is attached to um, your compliance in our program. Uh, if you're a residential, if you're a residential student on campus, it's seven hundred and fifty dollars. Um, you're also provided with tutoring, mandatory tutoring for your first year. Um, an academic counselor. We provide personal and professional um, enrichment workshops throughout the semesters on campus. And when you join OSP EOF, you come into a family. We always say once EOF, always EOF. And 
off the bat, when you join our program, there's 12 people that got you. Um, they have your back. They're there to support you in any way we need to. Um, and there's always opportunities for students to grow in our program. Um, some of the other benefits of being an EOF student is that um, your traditional TAG um, grant is eight semesters for just a regular admitted student. For an ELF student, they are um, given up to 12 semesters of TAG. And TAG is your state um, grant. Um, one thing I'd like to say is that please make sure to file your FAFSA on time. We see a lot of students that lose out on the opportunity to our school and to our program because they don't, um, file their FAFSA right away or um, their FAFSA is not completed and they don't make the cutoff point. And like any other program, we do have limits on who we can bring in and how many students we can bring in. The funding is limited. So I would just advise you to please do your FAFSA early. You need your 2019 tax returns. Um, and wherever you go, make sure you look into the EOF program because it's definitely a program that could benefit um, students. Arturo has my um, contact information and I'll be here for the questions and answers. Thank you, Ms. Goldstein, great. So guys, have you have seen, I, we have uh, options for everybody basically. We have the honors program, we have the EOF program, the regular admissions. Um, and as Ms. Goldstein stressed, the importance, just to wrap up, uh, of your FAFSA, right? Your FAFSA is your, uh, the application for financial aid. Um, this is huge. This is it's important for you guys to submit. Actually, we have a program called the NJCU Debt Free Program, uh, which if you have a household income of $65,000 or less, a household income of $65,000 or less, uh, we, uh, we would cover your tuition and fees. So the cost of tuition and fees, ooh, where is, this thing? Um, is this right here. For example, for this current year in state, this is the total for tuition and fees. So for that program, the NJCU debt-free program, if you have a household income of $65,000 or less per year, you would qualify for coverage of this entire cost right here, okay? The only way to know if you qualify for that program is to submit your FAFSA. Uh, we have workshops going on every, every Thursday. I'll send you guys that link as well uh, at 4 p.m. virtually um, from our financial aid office, which, is, which details you know, the, 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 the FAFSA application process. Uh, as well. And I can't stress this enough. We can't stress this enough of submitting your FAFSA early. It opened up on October 1st. Um, uh, the sooner you do it, the better for you. The longer you wait, the uh, um, say I have some, I have students in the past that have waited until this late spring or the summer, you know, typically if they're eligible, they're going to be able to access loans, but not grants. Grants is money that you don't pay back. You know, th those, those are the ones you want if you're eligible for it. Um, so definitely apply the sooner the better for uh, students that are not citizens or residents of the United States. If you're undocumented, for example, then we, New Jersey has this uh, alternative financial aid application. You guys can click on this link and, 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 uh, and submit your application through there because they, 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 if you're eligible, you would have access to state funds um, as well. Guys, so we've got a lot of information. Uh, I know you guys are going to hear from other schools right now as well. It's been a pleasure to join us. We're going to take questions at the at the end uh, uh, at the end um, uh, after uh, after uh, towards the end of this event. Uh, this is my information here. I'm actually going to put something here on the chat. Let me see here real quick. Um, check it out. I'm going to put this right now. All right, so I just posted, I just placed a link on there. If you guys can click on that link, because we I showed a bunch of a bunch of uh, uh, links through my press throughout the presentation, right? I'm gonna send you a follow up email, but the only way the, the only way I can do that is if you guys fill this out, and that way I can get your email address. So click on that link, uh, fill out the registration form, and then we'll send you the follow up uh, email with our contact information. And if you uh, have any questions. Um, We'll reach out to you through through there as well, and we'll let you know for any other events that we're we're ho we're hosting as we're hosting. 
Guys, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you in a little bit. We're, we're going to stick around and answer any questions you have toward the end of the event. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Great. Thank you so much to Arturo, to Loida, and to Kelly for presenting today. I'm now going to turn it over to Shannon O'Brien from NJIT. I'm going to give you hosting privileges in a second. Great. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shannon O'Brien. As Ashley mentioned, I am an admissions recruiter here at NJIT. Um, in one minute, I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to give you a quick presentation and kind of go over our programs, our admissions process, um, and some pretty useful information for you guys. All right, it looks like I can share my screen now. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, NJIT is located in Newark, New Jersey. If you want to um, scan this code with your cell phone, it's going to pull you up to a form that you fill out. And then when you fill out that form, you automatically get uh, added to our mailing list. So once you're on our mailing list, you'll get follow up information about NJIT and some of our upcoming events and things like that. Um, I'll leave this up for just a few more seconds and then I also have it at the end so I can leave it up as well um, when we finish up here. This is an overview of what NJIT looks like today. We have over 120 different programs for students to study from, everything from our engineering programs to some of our smaller, lesser known programs like our communication and media school or our history um, degree program as well. Students here have access to 70 different research centers and labs. We have a pretty new makerspace on campus. We have a motion capture lab for our digital design students. Even our business students have access to Bloomberg terminals if they're interested in studying the stock market. We are a mid-sized school enrolling about 11,400 students. About 8,500 of those are our undergraduate population and the remaining is our graduate population on campus. Being that we are more of a mid-sized school, we do tend to see lower student to faculty ratios and smaller class sizes. Our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one and the average class at NJIT is 25 students. So you're not necessarily sitting in large hundred student lecture halls. Our students prefer that just because they get some more individualized attention with their professors. And then they also get to network with the other students in their class. 98% of our faculty members are holding the highest degree in their fields and we put about $161 million towards research activity each year. All of the programs that we offer are fully accredited by the appropriate board and commission. This is especially important for our students when they leave NJIT. Oftentimes, if you're looking to get an additional certification in your field of work, it does require that you have an accredited degree. Our newer College of Engineering is one of our five academic colleges here at NJIT. It is our oldest school. We just celebrated 101 years with them, actually. It offers 18 undergraduate programs, 21 masters, and nine PhD programs. Students can study everything from biomedical to mechanical and civil engineering, which were our two most popular last year, right down to general engineering, which is kind of like the undecided of engineering. Students come in, they can take courses across the board, see what they like and what they don't like, before choosing their specialty. It's also worth noting that at NJIT, you can't come in just undecided. You do have to come in through one of the colleges that I mentioned. So whether that be general engineering or um, undecided college of science and liberal arts, for example. This is just a little bit more information about the maker space that I mentioned earlier. It's pretty new. It's about 10,000 square feet. So it's one of the largest educational facilities in the area. We have over $3 million worth of equipment inside. There are 3D printers, there's laser cutting machines. Students have worked on things like solar powered cars that they were able to take to a show over in Manhattan. They've created mini airplanes. We had an electrical engineering student a few years ago create a posture correcting t-shirt. So it has motion sensors in it. So when you put it on and slouch over, it beats to remind you to sit up straighter. So our students are working on some pretty cutting edge projects within the maker space. They just need to go through a certification class and after they achieve that certification they are able to go in and work on projects that they think of themselves or maybe some things that they're doing in the classroom. Our College of Architecture and Design has our architecture, digital design, industrial design, and interior design majors. The architecture program is split into two tracks, the five-year Bachelor of Architecture, which is for students who come to NJIT knowing that they want to become certified architects when they graduate. 
the four-year Bachelor of Science in Architecture is for students who are coming and maybe looking to further their education at the master's level following their graduations, so whether that be a master's in civil engineering or architecture or surveying. Our digital design program also has two tracks. It has the entertainment track and the production track. The entertainment track is for students looking to go into video game design or animation, and the production track is more for students looking to go into maybe digital journalism or website design. Our College of Science and Liberal Arts has our programs like physics, biochemistry, chemistry, biology. It also has our theater arts and technology program, our communication and media degree program. I always tell students that if it falls under this college and it might seem like it's more on the artistic side, it definitely has a technology spin to it. So our communication and media students are usually working for startup tech companies doing their social media. Our theater arts and technology program does tend to be more stage production and lighting and sound. Through the College of Science and Liberal Arts, we have a newer forensic science major. It was founded in 2018. It's the only forensic science degree program in New Jersey. Our students are getting hands-on field work by interning with the FBI, the Newark Police Department. We have crime scene investigating courses built into their curriculum where NJIT sets up mock crime scenes. Um, in the picture here, it's a mock crime scene in one of our parking decks. We've had them set up at a local florist shop as well and students go in, they collect the evidence and then they're able to study it later on. Also through the College of Science and Liberal Arts, we have the Cyber Psychology minor. It falls under our Science, Technology, and Society major, and it's the study of the way that the influx of technology and the internet in our lives has begun to affect the way that we think and the way that we act. So it is very relevant right now. Our Martin Tuckman School of Management is our business program. So students come in as a business major, and then after they achieve 60 credits, generally between their sophomore and junior year, they earn, they choose a specialization. So they choose from one of these six specializations listed here. They have to take a minimum of 12 credits within that area to earn the specialization along with their degree. And then if they are looking to become certified accountants, they need to take all 15 credits that are available through that specialization. The Yingwu College of Computing is our newest school here at NJIT. It was founded in 2001. Um, it has our programs like computer science, human computer interaction, information systems, information technology. Um, it teaches students a pretty broad range of computing skills and coding languages. And the purpose behind that is that technology is ever changing. So they want our students to be adaptable when they get to the workforce. Our Albert Dorman Honors College was ranked top 10 in public honors colleges in the United States. Students through the Honors College have to take a minimum of 12 credits. They have to attend two colloquia each semester. So this might be going to see a professor speak. It might be going to see a show. They have to participate in our community service program. It's referred to as the 15 and 15 program because they need to complete 15 hours of service on campus and 15 hours of service off campus. In addition to meeting that criteria, they have access to some pretty high level research and professional development experiences early on in their NJIT career. And they also have access to an honors lounge and a residence hall on campus. Through the Honors College, we have accelerated programs for students interested in going into the medical field or the law field. We're partnered with schools like Rutgers Medical School, Rutgers Dental School, Seton Hall Law School. And how this program works is students come to NJIT for three years, pursuing whichever degree they want. So it doesn't necessarily need to be um, a specific or required major. After that third year, they go on to the partnering professional school and they earn their NJIT degree after completing one year there. And then they go on to complete either their medical degree, their law degree, whatever they're going for. Our incoming freshmen are going to apply on the common application. You will need to submit your high school transcript to be our test optional for fall 2021 and spring 2022. So you are more than welcome to submit your SATs or ACTs, but you do not have to. You will need one letter of recommendation. This might be from a counselor, a teacher, a coach, whoever you wanna have write that for you. And then for the College of Architecture and Design, if you are interested in one of those four majors, you need to submit a portfolio. So this could be 10 to 20 pieces of your work. It doesn't necessarily need to be major specific. So if you are interested in architecture, for example, it doesn't need to be all models of buildings and blueprints. For our incoming freshmen, we're looking at about a 3.0 GPA. So like a B average, last year's average GPA was a 3.6. 
being that we are a technology institute, we will tend to look more at math and science grades. And while pre-calculus is suggested for students interested in going into STEM, it's not required, um, but students do say that the transition from high school to college is made a little easier if they have taken higher math courses throughout their high school career. If you are interested in submitting your SAT scores, you need an 1170 or above on the SAT with a 550 on the math section or a 24 and above on the ACT. And then here, it's also just lists those four majors that are going to require a portfolio. If you are interested in the Honors College, it's gonna ask you on the application. If you check off yes, it'll populate additional requirements. Those additional requirements are going to be two more letters of recommendation, so it will be three in total. There is a personal essay that comes along with the Honors application, so it would populate that prompt. There is an interview process. It says on campus here, it's not gonna be on campus this year. It's probably gonna be like this over Zoom. For the Honors College, they are looking for about a 3.5 GPA and above. Um, they are not test optional, so it's a 1370 or above on the SAT or a 30 and above on the ACT. In addition to your math and science courses, they're also going to be looking at the honors and AP courses that you've taken. For in-state students, they're paying about $18,000 a year in tuition with about $13,000 additional um, if they are looking to live on campus for a room and board. Here at NJIT, we have several options for financial aid. We encourage all students to complete the FAFSA. It's open this month. It usually closes in February. And then all incoming freshmen are automatically considered for academic scholarship when they submit an application. So there is no additional application for that. Our awards can be anywhere from $500 to $31,000. And the average package is $16,356. This is a little bit about our student life department at NJIT. We have over 140 different clubs and organizations. They might be academic specific, like biology or engineering societies. They might be a little more recreational. We have a radio station on campus that's all student run. Um, we have a Baja club that creates off-roading vehicles in our maker space. They take them to competitions around the country. And we also have 28 Greek life organizations too. We have six different residence halls at NJIT. Normally, students, freshman students are living in either Cypress or Redwood halls. They have the option of choosing from the traditional double with the communal style bathroom or suite style housing. And then our juniors and seniors can also choose from apartment style units on campus. We have several different dining options as well. We have our traditional dining hall that's gonna have your buffet. There's a pizza section, a breakfast bar. Um, we also have a tech cafe on campus that sells Starbucks products. We have a couple convenience stores too, a Taco Bell, a Smash Burger, and we have about eight different meal plans for students to choose from. And all of the places that are available on campus will fit into your meal plan, so you won't be paying anything extra. We are a division one athletic school. So here is a list of both the men's and women's sports that we offer. We also offer club and intramural sports. So depending on how competitive students are looking to get, there is something for everyone. Down in this corner here is our wellness and events center. We refer to it as the WEC. It's not only where we host big events like open house and our career fairs, but it's also our athletic center. So there are basketball courts inside, weight rooms, there's an indoor track, and students can swipe in and utilize that like their gym. And the athletic department will also host fitness classes throughout the week, like weight training classes or Pilates classes that students can go online and register for. NJIT is located in an area of Newark called University Heights. This area is home to four different colleges and universities, Rutgers, Newark, Essex County College, and Seton Hall Law School in addition to NJIT. So there's about 30,000 college students in this area. There's tons of places to go out to eat. The Prudential Center is right here. NJ Pack is about a 10 minute walk too. So if you're looking to kind of switch it up and get off campus, University Heights has something, has a lot to do. Our career development services is very involved with our students on campus. They'll host two career fairs a year. They have mock interview sessions. They have resume building courses. So our students are usually getting about one internship before they leave NJIT. Um, some of them have up to three or four, but it is definitely encouraged that they get that hands-on experience before they leave so they can add it to their resume and make themselves marketable to employees. Um, Students have interned at places like Facebook. They've interned at Google. We had a student over the summer intern for Adobe in their podcasting department. Um, so again, it is encouraged just so you get that hands-on experience so you're marketable to employers uh, when you leave NJIT. 
This is a little bit about life after you graduate from NJIT. The average graduate is leaving with about three full-time job offers. Their starting salary tends to be around $65,300, which is about $11,000 more than the average starting salary in the United States. Um, and halfway through their career, alumni are reporting they're earning about $121,000 a year. We have two application deadlines, um, both early action are November 15th and December 15th. The early action deadlines are non-binding, so all it means is that um, you get your decision earlier. So you don't have to go to NJIT if you receive an acceptance um, through one of those dates. Generally, you receive your acceptance the end of December, beginning of January when you apply for these dates. And then we have a rolling admission deadline of March 1st. So as your application becomes complete, um, we review it. It usually takes about two to three weeks, and then you can receive your decision. It is worth noting that if you are interested in one of those accelerated programs, it is a deadline of November 1st. And if you're interested in just the Honors College without the accelerated program, it is a deadline of February 1st. That review process is a little bit lengthier, so it's going to take um, until the end of March, beginning of April, before you're able to hear back. And if you are interested in submitting your SAT or uh, ACT scores, you would use these two codes to send them over to NJIT from College Board. And if you do want to include us on your FAFSA application, you would use this code down here. So we have several different virtual events throughout this fall um, semester. We have them during the week. We have them on the weekends to kind of fit everybody's schedule. Um, most of them tend to be open houses or major spotlight events. This is where the academic department is going to be sitting on these events. So if you have specific questions about curriculum or research projects that students are doing, that's a great time to interact with our academic departments. If you did want to visit us again, you can go to njit.edu forward slash visit to register for an upcoming event or a virtual tour. So that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. My contact information is here. I will also put it in the chat um, before I log off, but I will hang around if you guys have any questions. And I am going to pull up the QR code again. So if you did want to scan that, like I said, it just um, puts you on our mailing list. So any upcoming events or things like that, you'll be in the know. Thank you again. Um, like I said, I'll hang around for questions, but um, thanks for joining me today. Great, thank you so much, Shannon. And I am going to turn it over in a moment to Yahira Pons from Stevens Institute of Technology. Uh, once again, uh, we are saving our questions and answers for the end. If you have any questions that you'd like answered, you can drop them into the chat box and we will get to them once all of our presenters have finished. So let me now turn this over to Yahira. Hello, everybody. Okay, You're, you can share your screen now. Awesome. Yep. Okay. Here we go. So hello, everyone. My name is Yahaira. I'm the Assistant Director of Diversity Initiatives um, and EOF Specialist at Stevens Institute of Technology. So I work with undergraduate admissions as well as the STIP and EOF office. So today, I hope to give you a glimpse of what resources and opportunities we offer at Stevens. Um, I'll also put some information on the chat box. I will need to leave a little earlier because I have another college fair to attend, but I will leave information and my direct contact information in case you have any questions um, after the presentation. So quick brief history, Stevens was founded in 1870 by the Stevens family. Um, they had introduced and created the mechanical engineering major. So historically we're known as an um, a engineering institution, but we now offer 34 undergraduate academic programs. Uh, we were also an all-male institution until the early 60s and then we became co-ed. Stevens is currently considered a small private institution. We have just a little over 3,600 undergraduate students and about 93% of those students reside on campus. Our average class size is about 25 students. Once you get into your core classes, you're actually looking at 25 and under. And our current student to faculty ratio is an 11 to one. So these are the majors that we offer at Stevens. We do have minors, they're not listed on here, um, but what you should know about our programs of study, I won't review them all individually, um, but what you should know is when you are applying to Stevens, you are actually applying directly into the major. So if you are to be admitted, you will be admitted directly into the major that you choose. So it can be biology, literature, music and technology, accounting, engineering, et cetera. Um, we also offer a five-year celebrated master's program where students can actually take one of these majors along with any of our graduate programs and do a combined 
five years celebrated program. So you're basically looking at finishing your bachelor's and your master's all in five years. In addition to that, something that is new as of last year um, is that we only used to offer two undecided options, which was our, our business and engineering. Uh, last September, um, humanities and the arts, science, engineering, and business now all offer the undecided option. So in case the student is sort of unsure exactly what discipline they want to go into, they can actually select the undecided option at the time of application, be evaluated for it, um, and then you have a year to two. So basically three to four semesters to decide which discipline you want to go into or view want to completely change out of it. Um, this year for the seniors, any seniors in the room, we're actually going to test optional. Um, we are going to be revisiting the policy, so it's not a permanent one. But for anybody applying for next year, 2021, um, you will be um, up, sorry, you will have the opportunity to choose if you would like to submit your scores or if you would like to go completely test optional. We're not requiring any substitutions um, or any supplemental information. You actually can check off that you would like to be test optional um, for any of our majors with the exception of the two accelerated programs. Um, so Stevens offers a accelerated pre-med and an accelerated pre-law program. Our pre-med is a seven-year track. Ultimately, the way it would work is if you were to be admitted into it, you would be looking to do three years with us and contingent upon you passing your MCATs in your third year, then you would proceed to do uh, your four years with New Rutgers Medical School, the North Campus. Um, then we have a six-year pre-law program, which would be three years with us and three years with Christine Hall Law School. Uh, so that's who our collaborations are with. So everything but the accelerated pro um, programs will require, um, the accelerated pre programs, sorry, require the scores. But for all of our other majors, we're going test optional this year. So we offer business. Um, these are the degrees and under business accounting and analytics, business and technology. So business and technology is our largest um, program. It's a dual program. So ultimately what happens is students will choose from a, a what they call a technology major. So like a computer science, information systems, um, along with their business degree. So it can be any of the business programs that are listed here. Um, our marketing was completely revamped last year. So it's not new to us, but it was completely revamped. And so now it's called marketing innovation analytics. And our students are actually going to learn how to code within the marketing degree. So we're excited about that. Um, we are a STEM school, but we do offer humanities and the arts. Our students will also be required to take two humanity courses in their curriculum, regardless of what major they come in as. So we have everything from music and technology, philosophy, science, communication, social sciences, visual arts and technology, um, which can also, uh, students who are looking to go into game development or game production, you go into visual arts and technology. Then we have the sciences, so pretty traditional tracks, biology, chem, bio, chemistry, physics, mathematics, or um, you can go undecided. Um, as of last year, students cannot choose the undecided option. We offer computer science and cybersecurity. So there are two separate majors, or you can take cybersecurity under computer science as a, ma as a minor. Then we have engineering. Um, something that's really unique about our engineering program is that you will be part of what they call design spine. So our students who do come into engineering, whether you come in decided or undecided, you're actually going to take part in a three semester uh, curriculum called design spine. And the whole idea of that is for you to learn um, and be well acquainted with all of the different types of engineering that are offered. So to make you a better well-rounded engineer so that you can confirm that you're in the right path, or in some cases, some students will figure out that they wanna be in a completely different engineering um, area of specialization. Something that sets us apart from other institutions um, is opportunities for professional practice. Um, and at Stevens, we offer them in the form of an internship called research or study abroad. So 40% of our students participate in internships, pretty traditional. They take place in the summer, so they don't take time away from you during schoolwork. It's open to all majors and both our internship and co-ops are for pay. So our students make an average of 10 to 20,000 a semester or a summer. You can start as early as your summer after freshman year, but it is not a process that you go blindly into. So we do have a career advisor for you that will assist you in creating your resume, um, giving you access to the database so that you can start applying for jobs, so you can start figuring out what it is that you wanna do. Um, you can do it by location, you can do it by specialization. Ultimately, the second part of the process will be up to you. So you decide who you wanna interview with, you decide which offer you wanna take and which would be the best path for you, whether it's a co-op or an internship. Um, 30% of our students do co-op. Uh, the difference with co-op and internship is the timeline. So students who choose to do co-op will actually be at Stevens for five years, but you're not paying five years of tuition, you're still paying four, and you're only doing four years of academic work. 
Co-op though is also not available to all the majors that we offer. It's only available to science, computer science, cybersecurity and engineering students at this time. And ultimately what happens with the co-op is that it does take place during the school year. So what a student who decides to go into co-op, uh, their schedule will look like is basically one semester you're gonna go work, one semester you take classes. One semester you work, one semester you take classes. Um, both for co-ops and internships, our students can actually go internationally as well as nationwide or stay right here at home. So we've had students in um, Belgium, we've had students in Australia, in uh, uh, France, um, we've had students in Florida, Texas, California, Washington State. State, um, we've had students in New Hampshire, right here in New Jersey, New York. So it is also a great way for you to explore uh, different opportunities outside of, of you know, the campus community as well as New Jersey. Um, again, co-op is not open to all majors. You do get paid, so average starting salary is the same as an internship, so somewhere between ten to twenty thousand. Most students will start their first semester, uh, first semester sophomore year, but you can start any of these opportunities as early as your summer after freshman year. Um, and it's a five year. So you'll hear students say three out of five. They're either doing their master's or their co-op. If they're there for the co-op, you're not paying five years of tuition. You're still paying four and you're still doing four years worth of academic work. Um, and yes, we've had students say, well, what about if I want to also do my master's? Then you're looking at six years uh, with the co-op. And 20% of the students do research and 10% of our students uh, still want to take advantage of a study abroad experience that is done anytime after your first year. So um, our average starting salary is about 76.4 um, and that we have over a thousand companies that come recruiting a Stevens student every year. We also host three career fairs on campus this year. We're hosting them virtually um, and 96% of our students were placed in jobs last year. So 96% reported that they had of a job, 3% uh, reported staying behind to do a master's and 1% reported doing uh, mission trips like engineers without borders, doctors without borders. Um, some students said that they took a gap year to finish their um, research opportunities that they started at Stevens or they're entrepreneur. So we've had students who started their businesses while at Stevens and so they wanted to continue that after graduation. And so that's a representation. If you want a little bit more in depth about the major top companies, we have a career outcomes report that's been updated online. So if you go to the search box, just put career outcomes and the report will populate so you can check it out. Stevens is a very busy campus. We're also located right in Hoboken in the heart of it all. Um, so basically our backyard is the city. So we call it the million dollar view. But once we do pay very close attention to your activities and what you've been involved in your leadership roles, what you do outside and inside school and what you've done the last four years. Um, our campus is very active and very busy and it has a lot to do with the way our students integrate. Um, they're also a very inclusive community. So what we offer um, is at the Bond Performing Arts Center. So it's not a major or minor, but we do over 50 live shows there so you can join. There's some voluntary position and also some paid positions and there's some positions um, where students just wanna act, they wanna sing, they wanna do costume design, stage, lighting, managing, all that good stuff, then they can join the Performing Arts Center. Um, we do have some annual events and traditions, Unity Carnival, Unity Showcase, the tree lighting, that's one of my favorite, um, where they take a night in December right before they leave for finals. Um, and they have a competition with the residence halls, fraternity sorority houses and the facilities. Um, and they actually put lights and they turn them all on at the same time. We also do things Relay for Life, a Founders Ball. So there are many events that our students do. We also have over 110 registered student organizations. We are division three in sports. We also have club teams um, and intramural recreational teams. We have a bowling alley on campus, a swimming pool and two gyms that are all accessible to you as a student throughout the year. And then we recorded over 15,000 community hours last year. So currently we offer um, the opportunity for our students to live on campus. So we don't require our students to reside on campus, um, but about 93% of the student population does reside on campus. We have seven residence halls. We have a, a condominium apartment building that we lease that's for special interest housing. We also have Stevens leased housing, about six condominiums in Hoboken where our upperclassmen um, reside in. And then we have four shuttle lines. So our students can come to and from Hoboken to the bus stop as well as the train. And so these shuttle services are specifically for our students. Uh, we do have several dining options for our students for meal plan choices, six dining options. Uh, something that we also do is several partnerships in the city of Hoboken. One of them is with about 13 restaurants where our students will actually show up with their ID and trade. Um, basically what you're doing is swapping one meal for one of their meals. Um, it's just another way to get out in the, into the community and also for our students to collaborate um, and also just give them some variety. Um, and then we also have a, a campus dietitian on call for our students. 
Uh, and just so a friendly reminder that Hoboken is a very busy town as well. Um, it's about 4.5 square miles, but there's lots going on, lots to do. Um, it has ranked fourth in the nation for best college town. We are currently building um, two 20 story high residential buildings. This is what they're actually looking at. And it's actually right on target. Um, considering the pandemic, it didn't necessarily slow us down. So we're excited about this big project. The idea for this is that it, we're going to host um, a thousand new beds. Um, this is for our students. So we hope to be able to have our students reside on campus longer than to have the lease on the off campus. Not that they complain, but you know, students want to be in the immediate campus. Um, so right now we're building two brand new towers, gaming area, marketplace. Um, it will also house a three level university center. Um, they're hoping to put in some student organization offices, but the main focus of this is going to be a huge new um, student center and two residential towers that will house about 1,000 new students. Um, our Student Wellness Center was revamped and revised. Um, so actually, they opened it up and they put it further up on campus. Um, so it's the Wellness Center that includes health services, student counseling, disability services, and wellness education. Um, yes, a lot of our stuff is taking um, place now virtually, but we have increased our hours as well as after hours and a crisis hotline. Um, and we have the care line as well. Um, in case you think that a friend is going through something, you call anonymously and we can check up on them. And then we've also extended our hours for disability services, our staff as well and our hours for counseling. Our students um, we find are making better use of the new facility um, and where it's located, but I think they're you know a lot more open to um, even if they're having like a crisis or a meltdown and it's not something that's common, they feel like they can find somebody to talk to and we can help them out. So that's, uh, it's not new to us, but the facility where it's located is brand new to us. Um, it's up on the top of campus now. And we did just open up right before the pandemic, our Gateway Academic Center, which hosts 11 new classrooms, 45 new faculty offices, and 13 teaching and research labs um, that are all focused on computer science, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and healthcare innovation. If you are gonna to apply to Stevens, these are what we call our requirements. So we will take the Common App. We also have a custom app, uh, Common App, official transcript with your senior year coursework and your senior year grades. You don't worry about this. Um, we will always follow up with your counselor and get this information. We do require two recommendation letters, but we only need, um, we'll take four, but we only need two. And they should be one from your school counselor and one from a teacher, it can be any teacher. And just a friendly reminder that for fall 2021, for seniors who think or would like to apply, we are gonna go test optional with the exception of our accelerated program. So this year you will have the option of choosing whether you're gonna submit your scores or not. And then the essay, just a friendly reminder that if you fill out the Common App, make sure you check for grammatical errors and that you don't put one university's name in it because then it will get sent to every school that you apply to. So we are not rolling a mission. We offered three opportunities for our students to apply. Um, and as you can see, this is what they are. Early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision. So early decision one is gonna be due November 15th. We will release by December 15th. You will have till January 10th to deposit. We do release all letters electronically. So it's, they will be sent to your email. And we will also release decisions with what we call estimated financial aid awards. Early decision two is due January 15th. We'll release by February 15th and you have till March 10th to deposit. And regular decision is gonna be due January 15th as well, but we won't release till April 1st. It is a larger applicant pool. And then you will have till May 1st to deposit. Our uh, accelerated pre-med program has one deadline and that is November 15th. It is the only program that if the medical school is not gonna continue with your candidacy, they will inform us by late February, early March. Um, then they will send us back your application and we will move you to regular decision and evaluate you in regular decision for your second choice major. So just so you have an idea of what our profile looked like, uh, last year was about 40% acceptance rate. Our test scores, our, our mid-range was between a 1340 and a 1500. So 25% of students came in under, 25% came in over. The ACT was between a 30 and a 33. Same thing, 25% came in under, 25% came in over. Um, we do super score, we super score both. Um, and then these were students that were actively involved. So we saw time and time again in the applications that these are students who were doing a bunch of different activities. They also had family responsibilities, some were in athletics, some had hobbies. Um, so we're looking for that kind of activism in your application. The average GPA was about a 3.84 weighted. Uh, so 25% of students came in under, 25% came in over. And when we say challenging course load, we are starting to see more and more students take AP honors and dual credit courses, which we'll give you credit for at the time of admission. 
93% of our families uh, received financial aid awards last year. Uh, we do require the CSS profile. We don't require the FAFSA, but we recommend it. They should all be filled out and completed by the deadline that you decide to apply. So what you're looking at here is a raw figure before any type of financial aid. We also do participate and offer EOF. Our students can potentially get up to full tuition and fees covered at, with EOF. Um, we do not require a separate application for EOF. You actually just select the two questions on the Common App. Have you lived in New Jersey for more than 12 months? You say yes. And would you like to be evaluated for EOF? You say yes. And then I will reach out to you individually to send us your basically your tax information. But other than that, um, we have 20 spots for EOF. And our um, financial aid packages range from full uh, tuition, because we do have some full tuition scholarships, um, uh, to 5,000. So between 5,000 full tuition, but you can apply to anything, um, just EOF and our first robotic scholarship. Our honors program, we do have one, um, but you cannot apply to it either. It will be awarded to you at the time of admission. Um, so it will actually come out in your letter. In case we have any sophomores or juniors attending today's presentation, we do have some wonderful Stevens pre-college program opportunities. Um, they're basically, hopefully we'll be back on campus next year. Last year they had to do some virtually. Um, the idea is for you to feel like a college student. Uh, they are programs where you're actually going to design a project within the discipline that you're looking to get into. Um, so they all include campus housing, meal plans, facility access. You get to go to the labs, you work with the professor. So you're not doing homework or exams, but it is a great way for you to figure out if you're in the right industry and if this is exactly what you think you want to study in college. We hope that you feel like a college student, you meet students with similar backgrounds, similar interests, um, and then hopefully you enjoy the whole college experience and it turns you into the direction of applying for schools and even maybe Stevens as well. Um, Stevens, I do backslash summers where you can check them out. The application does not go live till December. And that is it. So I will put my information in the chat just in case you have any questions. That's an electronic form that I just uploaded. If you want to receive information or updates, feel free to fill that um, card out. If you are applying or you're thinking of applying, then we also record for demonstrated interest. So we'll keep track of every time you fill one of those out. Great. Thank you so much, Yahira. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Okay, so we now have some time to turn the floor over to questions and answers. Uh, if everyone would like to put their contact information in the chat box as well, that would be great. I also have a slide at the end with everyone's contact information. So whenever anyone is ready, you can drop your questions in the chat and our presenters will answer them as they come in. Thank you to Arturo, Kelly, Loida, Shannon, and Yahira for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time to speak on your institutions with the Jersey City Free Public Library and all of our attendees today. Uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourselves and we can wrap this up. Everyone's contact information is on this slide and in the chat box today. Thank you, Thank you very much, Ms. Dale. Yeah, of course, we're happy to have you. Yes, thank you for having us. Yes, of course, anytime. You are always welcome at the library. Thank you, good luck to everybody. Thank you. Thank you guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend.